we're going to pick up now for our properties of integrals. Uh, let me ask you this. What is the derivative of a constant? The derivative of a constant is 0. Therefore, the antiderivative of 0 is equal to a constant. Actually, we can write this as the constant. The derivative of constant is 0, so the integral of 0 is the constant. All right? We have all right. what's our integral of a constant? What do constant multipliers do? Constant multipliers multiply along. All right. What do you suppose? The integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals. Just like the derivative of the sum is the sum of the derivatives, in a similar fashion, the antiderivative of the sum is the sum of the antiderivatives. So, the integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals. What we would say is, you may break this into two pieces. It's the integral of f of x dx plus the integral of g of x dx. The integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals. Now, what if we subtract instead of add? Then you may subtract instead of add. So integral plus or minus is equal to integral plus or minus. Integral of the sum is the sum of the integrals. All right? So those are the standard, just kind of the general basics. Let's do some specifics now. All right? Some specific occurrences So for some specific functions. We've been using very generic functions for now. All right, we know what is the derivative of sine? The derivative of sine is cosine. I'm going to write the integral of cosine. If the derivative of sine is cosine, what's the integral of cosine? The derivative of sine is cosine. So the integral of cosine is sine plus the constant. All right? Now, what is, uh, let, let me sort of explain why this, let me, let me get a little more detail here. The reason this is true, or where this rule comes from, let me, let me back off. I think I've kind of rushed this a little bit. Let's back off a little bit. Let's back off, back off. The derivative of sine is cosine. So the integral of cosine is sine, except we need the constant. So the derivative of sine is cosine, so the integral of cosine is sine. So let's make a list of our properties over here. Integral of, I'm going to put this one second, you'll see why here in a minute. Now, what's the derivative of cosine? The derivative of cosine is not sine. The derivative of cosine, we all know this, is negative sine. Now, here's what we're going to do. Typically, now you could, don't here in the what I'm going to put here in the green, don't we don't write this down. Don't write down that we say so the integral of negative sine is equal to cosine. That is correct, but no one ever writes it that way. Usually when we want to talk about the integral, we want the stated problem to be, if you will, clean, and then the result can be whatever the result is. This is correct, but no one ever writes it that way. Here's what we do. This negative 
may be written in front because constant multiple this is negative one times. Constant multipliers multiply along. And now if you multiply both sides of this equation by negative one, it vanishes here and is introduced here. That's the form we're going to use. The integral of sine is negative cosine. What do we know about the derivative of C, uh, sorry, of tangent of x? What's the derivative of tangent of x? Is secant squared of x. So what's the antiderivative of secant squared of x? What's the antiderivative of secant squared of x? Is it clear that's tangent of x? plus the constant. So all of the six trigonometric functions have a similar structure. Now rather than complete these in this form, I'm going to generalize it a little more uh, specifically, a little more uh, generically, I suppose. I'm going to generalize it generically. That's from the Department of Redundancy Department. We're going to uh, state this a little more generically. Um, recall that when we do our derivative rules, we allow for the possibility that u might be a function of x. We allow for the possibility of the chain rule. So typically, these are stated in terms of u. And notice, this gets cosine of u and u prime, we allow for the possibility of the chain rule. Well, in a similar fashion, when we state these integrals, we state them in terms of the variable u. For now, the, the way to think of it is, that's just the way it's done. There is a specific reason later on, and we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But, these are correct, and the others associated with them would have been. But this is not the way people typically write it, and this is not the way that you should memorize it in terms of the basic forms. When we say basic forms, that's why I'm going to come back over here and write these in the more generic way. We write and later in the course, and if you have Calc 2 in your future, you're going to be doing this till you're blue in the mouth. This U variable is used all over the place. So this is the form you want to learn this in. Sine of u du is negative cosine. I'm sorry, the integral of sine of u du is negative cosine of u plus the constant. And then the integral of cosine of u du is sine of u plus constant. And then similarly, the other uh, relationships among trigonometry are also stated in terms of u. Also, remember that we moved the decimal point, I'm sorry, we moved the negative sign around. Uh, in these others, the, the derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared. We do this same little fiddly bit with the negative sign in that instance, and we use the same little fiddly bit manipulating the negative sign with the derivative of cosecant that's negative cosecant cotangent, we do the same kind of manipulation with the negative sign. So put that all together. These then now become the basic forms. Let's see if I can write them all out here. The integral of secant squared of u du is equal to tangent of u plus the constant. The integral of cosecant squared of u du is negative cotangent. The integral of secant u, tangent u. What function had its derivative give us this? We need to work backwards. Integrals 
antiderivatives. It's essentially a big game of Jeopardy. So you know that if the question is, what's the derivative of tangent, the answer is secant squared. Here, it's like Jeopardy. You're given the answer. What question would that have come from? You're given the answer. What question would that have come from? This would have come from secant. And then the last of the six, cosecant of u, cotangent of u du, is the negative. The negative gets manipulated similar to the way it happened here in this first instance, is negative cosecant of u plus constant. So those are the six trigonometric basic forms for now. Uh, if any of you hang around in Calc 2, uh, and if you've, any of you have me for Calc 2, uh, but if you, no matter what, when you get into Calculus 2, there will be others. But these are the basic six for now. In fact, some of these we're going to make a modification of. Uh, there, we will introduce a few more of these um, even yet this semester. But the negatives can be tricky. Here's the little memory device I always tried to use for the integrals, with its trigonometric integrals. If the answer is a co-function, it's negative. If the answer is a co-function, it's negative. If the answer is a co-function, it's negative. Don't look at what the problem states. Look at what the answer is. If the answer is a co-function, it's negative. If the answer is a co-function, it's negative. If the answer is a co-function, it's negative. As far as these basic forms, that was the memory device that I always tried to use as a student, and it's correct. It gets you through anything you need here. So uh, these are the six... Uh, basic trigonometric uh, basic forms for now. There will be more later. And so now what we'll do is I'll work through a, a video with several examples of the types of functions you'll be working with and several examples of antiderivatives.